Hi, today is June 8th. We're walking through the Bible, answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We're reading the One Year Bible. It's divided into four separate readings. The Old Testament, a portion of the New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. It takes about 15 minutes if you're a good reader. Maybe 20 minutes. You can listen to it online. You can read it. You can uh, use a Bible app. I happen to use the Blue Letter Bible uh, for reading. So you can choose the audio on that part. You can listen to it any way you wish. And so we're just going to pick some of the parts out that are and highlight them and try to answer those questions. And we are referring to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, through chapter 4, verse 34, Acts 6, 1 through 15, Psalms 126, 1 through 6, and Proverbs 16, 26 through 27. And in the Old Testament, Solomon has firmly established himself as king of Israel. And the Bible says that he loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father David, except that Solomon, too, offered sacrifices and burnt incense at the local places of worship. The most important of these places was Gibeon, and he was sacrificing a thousand burnt offerings. And that night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, What do you want? What do you want? I often ask people, what do you want? They're at the altar or they're asking for prayer. What do you want? Well, I don't know. And I tell them, well, if you went up to a candy store and, and asked a cashier, uh, the, the man or woman standing behind the counter and they're ready to serve you and they asked you, what do you want? And you said, I don't know. What would you get? Well, the answer is nothing. If, uh, you know, sometimes, and a lot of times, really, God cares about what you want. And so he's asking Solomon, what do you want? What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. It's repeated in Matthew and some of the other Gospels. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, You showed faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. So I am like a child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your chosen people. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? And uh, so the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you asked for. And I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has had or ever will have. That's a great prayer. Let's start praying that first thing in the morning. Lord, give me a wise and understanding heart. Give me a wise and understanding heart, a heart that will speak to my mind and will overcome all of the, the stuff that comes into our minds. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And there's an if you, then I statement. If you follow me and obey my, my decrees and my commands, as your father David did, then I will give you a long life. I will give you a long life. And so this scripture reminds me of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 where it says seek first the kingdom of God and all of these will be added unto you and before that Matthew in the gospel of Matthew Jesus was saying uh, don't worry about what you eat or what you're going to wear the you know the Lord your father in heaven will take care of you but seek first the kingdom of God 
Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. Solomon woke up and realized it was a dream and returned to Jer Jerusalem. And then there's a very famous account of two prostitutes who had two babies and one of the babies died and the mom of the dead baby swapped babies while the other mom was still sleeping. And in the morning, the mom with the dead baby next to her realized it was not her baby and they were fighting over it and they brought the problem to Solomon. And Solomon heard the account. And this is the first example of Solomon's answered prayer. This is where God gave him wisdom beyond uh, his own understanding and his own uh, ability. He said, bring a sword. And then he told the soldiers and the guard to cut the baby in half and to give one half to each mom. And of course, the woman who actually loved that child because it was her own said, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Give it to this other woman. It's hers. It's not mine. You, you, you know, basically don't kill my baby. And the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live for she is his mother. And the people were in awe of the king and they saw the wisdom of God had, that had given they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. And then it says in verse 20, the people of Judah and Jerusalem, this is chapter four, the people of Judah and Jerusalem, I'm sorry, the people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They were very contented with plenty to eat and drink. Now, if you remember back, Genesis twenty two seventeen was a repeated promise to Abraham, a man who had no children. And at this point in time, he had one promised son, one miraculous little boy, and he was willing to sacrifice this child. And God said, no, no, no. I just wanted to know if you were willing. And God said, I'm going to greatly multiply your seed. Now listen to this, as the sand which is on the seashore. And here it is in chapter 4 of First Kings. There is the uh, prophecy and the covenant coming to pass. God keeps his promises. It may take generations. It may even take eternity. But, you know, until we get to eternity, but he keeps his promises. During the lifetime of Solomon, all of Judah and Israel lived in peace and safety. And each family had its own home and garden. And then it starts listing all of the things that Solomon had. He had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses, 12,000 horses, and there was a tax of food. And, and then God, it says, God gave Solomon very great wisdom and understanding and knowledge as vast as the sands on the seashore. In fact, his wisdom exceeded that of all the wise men of the East and the wise men of Egypt. We could be wise if we ask for wisdom. And Samuel had warned the people, for Samuel chapter 8, that the king would do just what Solomon was doing. He had uh, great wealth, but he was taking it, a lot of it from the people. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. There is a but. Things were going really well. There were believers being added to the church daily. There were great miracles and testimonies, and they were all together and they didn't consider any of their material goods uh, their own, and they shared it with each other. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, so now we're not just adding, like one disciple adding believers. Believers are adding believers, and they're multiplying, and they're getting very large and a little bit unruly. And they were complaining. The believers were complaining about the, the food distribution. So the apostles said, we should, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. 
And so they selected seven men who were well-respected and full of the spirit of God and wisdom. And, and then they said, we'll give them the responsibility. So they, they selected seven men. One of them was Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Now, Stephen, verse 8, a man full of God's grace and power performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. Did you notice that the director and the uh, disciple who was in charge of the food program, you know, like nowadays we would call it the director of the food bank or the worker at the food bank, he was as responsible for amazing miracles and signs and wonders among the people as the pastor was, as the apostle. Um, and he was doing what God put in him and helped him to believe for. But one day, some men from the synagogue of free slaves, as it was called, started to debate with him. They were Jews and none of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen spoke. And that's one thing that men and women do not like. They do not like to lose. And so here's this competition and a debate, and they are really upset. So they lied about Stephen, and they brought him before the council, and um, they said that he had done something very, very, uh, very serious. Uh, they were they were accusing him of changing the uh, customs that Moses had handed down and he's always speaking against the holy temple and against the law of Moses, which wasn't true. And verse 15, at this point, everyone in the high council stared at Stephen because his face became as bright as an angel's because he was with uh, God, with the Holy Spirit. Psalm 126, and we're going to verse 3, we're talking about our relationship. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the, des the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but there's a 180 degree turn there in that three letter word. They sing as they return. So we plant in difficulty, but we harvest a great joy. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 26, it's good for workers to have an appetite. An empty stomach drives them on. So, hmm. Well, anyway, I'll just leave that with, this is the wisdom that God has given to us in Proverbs. So I want you to have an absolutely wonderful day. Share these videos so God's word may be heard and have a blessed day.